Hello everyone, and welcome to Dragon Age the Valguard's character creator. My initial plans for this video was to have no commentary, and just let the character creator play out and allow you guys to watch me create the dwarven character that I used for the preview event. But looking back at a few emails, it looks like I have to have video commentary or voiceover over all of the footage that is shared. So unfortunately, I can't just let it play out. But I have a clever solution here. What I'm going to do, instead of just telling you guys what's going on right in front of your eyes in the character creator, I think you guys can figure that out on your own. I'm going to start reading to you guys a short story from Dragon Age to Vinter Knights. And to Vinter Knights is a collection of short stories that uh, I highly recommend that you read before you play the Valguard, as many of the stories tie directly into the game and include many of the companions. So without further ado, enjoy the rest of the character creator here. I try to scroll over every single option, even though I was also trying to be fairly quick. But hopefully you guys get to see some cool stuff. The title of this story is called Three Trees to Midnight by Patrick Weeks. Mirian Aventus didn't know much about Kunari. Until last week, they had been an annoyance. Something young soldiers went off to fight, while everyone else grumbled about the taxes they paid to defend the Imperium from the savage Oxmen. That ignorance had ended in a blast of cannon fire, and in less than a day, Ventus, jewel of the Tevinter Imperium, had fallen. The Kunari had cut down anyone wearing armor. Those who were unarmed, they had herded into different groups. The women, children, and elderly had quickly returned to their homes. The mages had screamed horribly as alchemical concoctions killed their minds and left them as empty husks who stumbled along, sweeping dirt from the streets with awful vacant stares, their beautiful gold-trimmed robes dragging in the dirt behind them. The men, however, had been put into work camps. The afternoon sun was blinding after days down in the hold of the Kunari ship. Mirian squinted, his chained legs rattling as he shuffled along in the line of prisoners. The sandy beach gave way to the grass, and shortly thereafter to forest, where a dense cloud of black foliage hunkered over twisted green trunks as though preparing to lash out at the weeds below. Vishante Kafas, Mirian muttered. The Kunari bastards had taken them to the outskirts of the Arlathan forest. The last of the prisoners were off the ship now, and shirtless Kunari roared at them to line up waving swords that looked like they could chop through a horse with no appreciable difficulty. Finally, a Kunari even larger than the others stepped forward. His face was twisted into a scowl, his gray skin painted gold with red slashes, and his armor was a mass of knotted rope twisting around jutting spikes. His horns were jagged and swept forward to either side of his face like a low helmet. One horn had been chopped off, probably in battle, and replaced with steel. Bas, he called, his deep voice sending a shudder through Mirian's gut. That is what you are, Bas. Things. You do not know what is and is not. You need the guidance of the Kuhn to learn. How generous of you, muttered the prisoner who had been in front of Mirian, a tall man whose accent placed him as from the south. Mirian kept his head down. If the Kunari were going to single out someone for back talk, it wouldn't be him. I am Bas Tar. Keeper of Bas, the Kunari leader went on. You belong to me now. Work and you live. Resist and you die. Run. A slow smile twisted across his face. And you belong to the Hunt Master. He gestured at another Kunari warrior, this one dressed in lighter armor, strips of leather and drake scale bound by crisp red ropes. His face was painted with stripes of black and white. His cold stare swept down the line of prisoners as Bastar went on. Run, he will track you down, and you will suffer, as the mages of Ventus suffered. Mirian felt the panic rising up in him, and fought it down with a conscious effort, clearing his mind and keeping his body still. When he was certain he could look up without giving himself away, Bastar had moved on. You will take axes, you will cut the trees, prove you are useful and obedient, and you will one day earn a place in the Kuhn. Bastar looked across the line of prisoners, then let out a snort. Come. Mirian glanced nervously at the Huntmaster, 
but the Kunari tracker had walked back to the ship. Kunari guards came forward, carrying massive chests between them, and dropped them to the sand. As Mirian drew closer, he saw that the chests were filled with wood axes, heavy and clumsy, sharp enough to fell a tree, but too clumsy to be much use in a fight. Each prisoner got one, and as he did, he was released from the long prisoner's chain. The prisoners weren't released fully, though. Before they were freed from the prisoners' chains, they were shackled into pairs, each pair connected at the ankle by a length of chain no longer than Mirian's forearm. Only a pair of circus performers could run while tied together like that. Before Mirian knew it, he and the prisoner in front of him were at the front of the line. The other prisoner stepped forward, back straight and shoulders square under his brown laborer's tunic. His hair was silver, Mirian noted, and revised the other prisoner's age up a few decades. Right, said the prisoner, holding out a calloused hand to the guard standing over the chest of axes. Off to work then. And as he turned, Mirian saw the points of the man's ears. An elf. That explained everything. Mirian's mouth twisted into a sneer as the Kunari handed the elf the axe. Any elf in Ventus would have been a slave, so of course he'd have no loyalty to the Imperium, no understanding of what Tevinter had protected him from all these years. He'd probably laughed as the soldiers had been cut down, the mages poisoned, happy to trade one master for another. Filthy knife here, Mirian muttered, glaring at the elf, unaware that the words had worked themselves free from his mouth until the elf and the Kunari guard stared at him. The elf was the first to recover. Lazy Shem isn't used to working, he said with an easy smile. Not with those soft hands of his. Chain me to another elf so I don't embarrass the poor man. You'd embarrass me with your knife-eared stupidity, Mirian snapped, and then stabbed me as soon as my back was turned. Quiet! The guard roared. There will be no disruptions. He spoke slowly. Most of the Kunari didn't speak trade well, Mirian remembered. Then chain me to a man, not this knife ear, Mirian said, glaring at the silver-haired elf. Probably faster for everyone if you do it, the elf added. The humans of Ventus are an ugly lot, and they only care for their own. The guard hesitated for a moment, but then a booming voice startled them all. No. They all turned to see Bastar stomping over from an other line of new prisoners. There were prison ships landing all along the beach. He glared at the guard, who shrank back, and then smiled at Mirian and the elf. The boss must learn. There are no more elves, no more humans. There are only boss, who must work to prove themselves worthy of serving the coon. He turned to the guard. Chain them together. Let them learn to work as one. As you say, Bastar, the guard murmured and brought out a chain. He clapped one cuff around the elf's ankle, snapping it shut, and then turned to Mirian. Helpless, Mirian stepped forward. The cuff was cold on his right leg, pinching his tender skin as it snapped shut. As you say, bastard, the elf said with an obedient smile, and the big Kunari looked at him, then nodded and strode off, ready to give orders to another line. Mirian let out a shaky breath as the guard undid the prisoner's chain and slapped a woodcutting axe into his hand. He glared at the elf. You could have gotten us killed. What's that, Shem? The elf asked, his face a mask of innocence. These old knife ears aren't as sharp as they used to be, and sometimes I hear things wrong. Go now and cut the trees, the guard said, pointing to the forest. Mirian saw that other paired prisoners were already at the edge of the wall of green hacking away. Work well and you will eat well. The elf started off, and Mirian stumbled as the chain jerked against his ankle. The elf looked back. Come on, Shem, he said with a little grin. Try to keep up. Mirian and the elf found an awkward rhythm after a few strides, keeping pace so that two legs chained together moved as one. Mirian's legs were longer than the elf's, and he had to shorten his steps. You keep running your mouth like that, You'll get killed, Mirian said as they made their way across the grass, the chain hissing between them. You're still a slave, idiot. Only now you're a slave to beasts that will kill you as soon as look at you. What would you know about it? The elf asked. His voice wasn't friendly anymore. When Mirian looked over, he saw that the elf was looking ahead at the forest. You're no laborer, whatever tunic you wear. Mirian's breath hitched, 
and his grip tightened around the axe he carried. You don't know what you're talking about, elf. Strife, the elf said. What? There's more than one elf around here. Call me Strife. And I know what I'm talking about better than you, I'd wager. Strife, if that is what he wished to call himself, still wasn't looking at Mirian, squinting instead into the trees ahead of them. The loose tunic hides your belly, but these nice rounded forearms say you haven't missed many meals, and you keep your head down out of fear, not habit. Mirian jerked his hands back up into his sleeves. At least I keep my head down at all. They came to a stop as the grass thickened into waist-high weeds. On either side of them, other pairs of prisoners had already started chopping at the trees, the dull thumps of their clumsy blows echoing through the air. What kind of stupid knife here calls the head guard a bastard? One who wants to know how much trade the head guard speaks, Strife smiled. Now we know. Enough to talk to us, not enough to get nuance. What kind of slave talks about nuance? Marion snapped. Strife stepped to the tree closest to them, a blunt, ugly thing whose trunk was so thick that Marion couldn't have reached his arms around it. Guards are watching them, Shem. Probably want to start chopping. He stepped to the tree and swung his axe with casual strength, his blade biting into the bark. Marion, elf, there's more than one Shem around here. He stepped up, looked at the tree a bit uncertainly, hefted his axe, and swung. The blade hit at an angle with a jolt that sent pins and needles up Marion's arm and he winced, dropping his axe. As it thudded into the soft turf, Strife burst out laughing. Now there's a man who hasn't done a day of hard work in his life. What were you, Mirian, before you put on those laborers' clothes to hide from the Kunari? A merchant? A petty noble? A man- Mirian was moving before he realized, and his fist smacked Strife in the face. The elf stumbled back, his smile gone and his face going red with anger. Shut your mouth, you damn knife ear! The smile was back a moment later, though, and the elf sank his axe into the soft turf and clenched his fists. Why don't you make me, Shem? Mirian came in with another swing, but this time the elf stepped into the blow and caught it on his tucked up arms. It was like punching a thick rope, and Mirian's knuckles stung as he tried to step back and stumbled as the chain reached its limits and nearly tripped him. A sudden flash blossomed into pain and Mirian staggered from a blow he hadn't even seen coming until it cracked across his face. In the distance, he heard yells and shouts, but then Strife punched him in the gut, and Mirian sank to his knees as the air whooshed out of him. Isn't that just like Tevinter? Strife asked, standing over him. From the corner of his eye, Mirian saw that the Kunari guard was approaching, with Bastar himself alongside him. Guarding fights you can't finish. Take away your mages and your slaves and your blood magic, and you're all soft. The guard put a hand to his blade, but Bastar grabbed his hand. He looked at Mirian and smiled, and shook his head. Now get up and work, Strife muttered, leaning in. Mirian lunged to his feet, ramming his head up and catching the surprised elf in the gut. As Strife staggered back, Mirian punched him again and again. No slave would talk like that, he said, breath hitching from effort as he brought his fist together to smash down on Strife's head. Whoever you are, you're a fraud, and as soon as I tell the guards... Strife's forearm, lean with long, ropey muscle, slapped Mirian's fists aside, and his other fist hammered Mirian's chest just below the breastbone, stealing his breath. As he stumbled, Strife caught him by the shoulder and leaned in. People say I talk too much, he said, and then his other hand came in with a blow Mirian saw coming, but couldn't do anything about, and the world exploded into light and then darkness. As the world slid away, he heard the Kunari laugh. The Kunari guards had beaten Strife afterward, of course. But it had been a perfunctory beating to make sure he knew there'd be more of the same if he talked back or caused more trouble. Later, the guards dragged him and the unconscious Mirian, still chained to him at the ankle, to a makeshift shelter where the prisoners were secured for the night. The guards came around with bowls filled with some sort of savory porridge and Strife shoveled it into his mouth. Beside him, Mirian, finally awake, sniffed at it and grimaced. Not up to your fancy tastes? Strife asked, shaking his head. Shut up. Mirian glared at him and then took a bite, chewing more than he needed to with a sour look on his face. That's the spirit. Eat hearty. You've got a full day's work ahead of you. The shelter was open on one side to let what passed for a breeze flow through and cool down the prisoners. Strife had a good view of the forest in the distance. The greens of the mossy trunks and heavy leaves darkened to black 
in the dim gray starlight. As he ate, a pale white form separated itself from the forest. It was a hala, antlers curling out like Tevinter's sabers. It scented the air, one foreleg raised. When it saw Strife looking at it, the hala tapped the ground slowly and deliberately three times. Strife shook his head and tapped his leg twice. The hala ducked its head down, and it turned back into the forest, gone as quickly as it had arrived. What was that? Strife looked over at Mirian, whose eyes were narrowed in thought. What was what? That deer, it was like you talked to it. Don't be silly, Strife said, smiling and cracking his knuckles. It was a deer. I shoot it off so it wouldn't end up in the porridge. No, those white ones are, Mirian thought. Allah, that's what the Dalish elves use to pull their wagons. Is it? Strife downed another spoonful of the porridge. It wasn't bad once you started thinking of it as lukewarm stew after your brothers had already gotten the good parts. And I'm going to leave the story right there as this video is coming to a close and I want you guys to be able to hear the different voice options that are coming up. Sorry to leave you all on a bit of a cliffhanger, but that is uh, Tevinter Nights and it's the first story in Tevinter Nights and the title is... What did I say? The title was, I already forgot, uh, Three Trees to Midnight. And uh, it's a really good story, only about halfway done from what I read to you guys, uh, but the second half is pretty exciting and fun. I highly recommend it. Maybe I can do some narrations on the channel. I'm just a little bit worried about copyright, doing the full stories, but I don't know. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you would like to hear an initial impressions video, I do have a video that came out earlier today on the channel. Uh, shows a lot of different footage, goes over a lot of different systems, and of course gives my opinion on the different systems that I was able to experience. And I have a few more videos planned for the next couple days. I'll catch you on the next one. Time to get to work. <laughs> What's he been saying now? Well, we're not in trouble. Let's move. Let's move. I'm happy we're here. All of us. <laughs>